Live from Beit Shemesh and broadcasted around the world, you are listening to the From Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Nahum Klegman. Interviews and advice from Jewish entrepreneurs from around the world. Listen, learn, be Masliach. Welcome to episode 21 of the From Entrepreneur. I have another great guest today, a rabbi, Rabbi Dan Roth from Torah Live, TorahLive.com. And uh, one of the things I really love and that inspires me most about this podcast is that when we're talking to uh, entrepreneurs, there are entrepreneurs that go and create amazing companies and do amazing things with their money. And then there are those that are creating organizations uh, that literally are changing the world and changing the Torah world. And today, I am so happy to be able to talk to you all about TorahLive.com. Uh, we're going to speak to Rabbi Dan about how he got started, about his background, you know, the challenges he's had, the successes, and what is TorahLive.com because uh, it's really... I'm just going to let Rabbi Dan uh, talk to you more about Torah Live. Rabbi Dan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Good morning. It's great to be here, Yuvan Nachum. It's uh, awesome to be here. I mean, we go back a few years already now, right? Yeah, you've been helping build Torah Live up and have a lot of our Korosatev to you. And I want to take this opportunity to let you know how I love your podcast. I find it so refreshing. I've been listening to it for the last couple of months since I heard about it as I'm driving, when I'm running, and it's just, you know, breath of fresh air. Oh, wow. Well, I, really, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. On behalf of all your listeners, I think we want to book a podcast with you. Somebody has to interview <laughs> you. you know, you're an inspirational guy yourself. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, it's one of the great things is that through these different podcasts, I do get to give a little bit over, over my own stories and stuff. So it's not all at once. I think too much of me at one time could be, uh, uh-huh. you know, like an overdose. So this is, <laughs> this is a great way to do it. But uh, so first of all, let's, let's tell everybody about what is Torah Live? Torah Live is a organization that is changing the world of Chinuch, getting people excited about Yiddishkeit. You know, my aim is to get every Jewish man, woman, and child excited about their heritage and what it means to be a Jew and live like a Jew. How we do that? Well, the medium we're using is multimedia, exciting videos, uh, Hollywood quality uh, video content, producing videos on all topics of Yiddishkeit from Halacha, Hashkofa, Midas. I just got to jump in here a second because, you know, you say Hollywood style and the truth is the type and the quality of these videos, these are not you know, something you'll find on YouTube. These are top of the line, produced, written, uh, like really fantastic, well done. I mean, obviously it's on the expensive side to do these, but they really are phenomenal. I mean, it's uh, they're entertaining. I'm sure the capture students will tell us about that, but uh, I'm just telling for the listeners that these are incredible videos and definitely worth checking out. But tell us a little bit more about uh, like what type of topics uh, you've covered so far. Like I've seen a bunch of them. I've I've seen on uh, Sukkah's Lo and Esrog, uh, and I saw you have one on Kiddush Hashem. Sure. You know, really, really great stuff. Yeah, we have on smiling and positivity, which just came out on a whole series on leadership. Last week, we put out a new video about the myth of writing a safer Torah, um, mezuzah, charity, Shabbos, blessing, success to fill in, you name it. I mean, we only just started. We have about 30 topics to date and we're ready to go. I have script over here in my case, ready to go on titsis, on judging others favorably, on, you know, everything, you name it. It's just no end. So, I mean, like, I mean, I think one of the first videos you did uh, was on um, mezuzah. All right, that's one of the first ones I've seen, I think. And it's not just a video. I mean, there was 3D graphics. There was, you know, uh, question and answer sessions with post game. There was uh, it, the details of how you make the mezuzah and, uh, you know, and where to put it and actually showing you the different aspects. I mean, it's, it's really incredible what, you, what you're putting together here. And, and something that excited me and some, you know, reason why I'm a big supporter of Torah Live. I, I just really feel what you guys what you're doing your team is, is just phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, we're always trying to combine halacha and hashkofa. It's not just you know, the dry laws of where on the doorpost the mezuzah goes. It's also the meaning that, you know, walking just, because you mentioned the mezuzah as an example, walking past the mezuzah is meant to be a life-changing event. You know, we have people who became Jews just from the inspiration that is contained in a mezuzah. And we try and give over that love of God and how walking past the mezuzah should be something that, you know, really knocks us into realization of what our life is all about. So always trying to bring out both the halacha and also the hashkof and inspiration. Fantastic. Okay. So, I mean, I want to dig in more into Torah Live. I want to, you know, about your audience, who it's geared toward, uh, how people are accessing is it given over in schools and all those uh, other great questions. But first, uh, you can hear from your accent. I want to go a little bit back into uh, your background, uh, where you're from, how you got started, uh, where you grew up, all that fun stuff. So I grew up in London, went to Hasmonean High School and I came to Israel at 18, I started attending uh, Karen Avenue. I was there for two years. And after that, I switched to Yeshiva Smir. And Baruch Hashem, that was about 20 years ago. From Karen to, to the Mir. Yeah. But is that, did a lot of guys uh, make that switch? Uh, yeah, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> one or two over the years. 
Wow. So that's fantastic. How long were you in the mirror for? Uh, officially, I am still registered in the mirror, you know, still try and learn there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can. And so from the mirror, so then you got, you got, I guess, you, I assume you got married and uh, yeah, well, made your home in Israel. Yeah. I got married while I was in the mirror, got into Halacha, did Smich of the Rabbanut. Okay. So from Smich, so how, how did we get into Torah? I mean, what, when you, after you got married, you went straight to Torah Live or you were in Chinuch for a while? Sure, before I answer that, I just want to backtrack because I think it'll be inspirational for your listeners is to hear, you know, how I made that switch from going in full-time learning just to writing this book and pick it up us. Rabbi David Olofsky was my neighbor at the time in Hanoff, and I shared with him my frustration in wanting to spend more time on pick it but not being able to within the learning environment. There's just no time to really uh, devote a serious amount of time to doing your own thing. It's not a very shivish thing to learn is Pika Ovis. Right. And he told me that Mishnah and Pika Ovis, while I was studying at the time, he pointed out the Mishnah says, Ben Esrim Liridaif, which means a 20-year-old is, the 20 is a time for pursuing, for chasing different elements in life. And then Ben Shloishim, Akoyach, when you're 30, it's a time for strength. And he said, what does it mean 20, 30 for strength and 20 for pursuing? What's going on over here? So he explained that the 20s is a time, the sages, Chazal, felt it's a time when you should be chasing different areas of life with be it in learning, different modes of learning, different forms of learning, halacha, ashkaf, is it learning, be and everybody's, you know, doing their own thing. Or if it's in the working world, are you going to be a, a doctor or an accountant? The 20s are the time that you're really chasing different uh, tracks in your life to discover what speaks to you. But then when it comes to 30, that's when real strength comes. What does that mean? What's strength come from? So he said, you know, he once had in his house for Shabbos a, a girl, a seminary girl, who, believe it or not, she was a black belt in karate. Oh, wow. And after Shabbos, she showed Rabbi Olofsky and his family how she, with her bare hands, chopped a, you know, piece of wood, slab wow. of wood. And she explained to him that the wisdom behind it is that you concentrate all the strength of your energies into one point, this point right over here on the palm of your hand. And that's where the strength comes from. Rabbi Olofsky said, that's where strength comes from. It's the ability to strip away all the different elements that you're not good at and to focus on the one thing that you are talented in that you're gifted at and to then pump all your energies into that one thing that's where real strength comes from and that's what the 30s is about having spent your 20s pursuing different elements in your life the 30s is a time that you're able to say you know what i found my thing i found what speaks to me i found what really can make me great and then just to 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 pour your energies into doing that and that gave me the confidence to make that switch when i look back now that was really a life-changing piece of advice Um, that i got from my olofsky that's amazing. I mean, it's really, it's actually is very inspiring. And I know, I forgot where I was just reading it somewhere. It says that Shem gives you skills and talents. He didn't give you the skills and talents to fight against it, not to, not to use it, but to actually use those skills and talents to strengthen it and to, you know, pursue it and to, you know, go after it, but to use it, obviously, uh, Lashem uh, Shemayim. But, you know, it's a lot of, uh, I think I was reading about how t- a lot of times about Shuvas, they have their skills, they have their talents. And then when they become from, sadly, they, you know, turn away from it and think that it's not, you know, uh, worth pursuing anymore. But, uh, as, you know, it seems from here, from Perky Elvis, it says that, no, do pursue it. Do, you know, use your skills, use your, your talents. And Hashem gave it to you for a reason. And you don't have to give up on your dreams. Obviously, things have to be do, done, you know, according to halacha, but there's room for everything under halacha. Yeah, absolutely. So now getting back, so you're in the classroom, you, you know, Perky Elvis. This is, you want to uh, teach and inspire these kids. And I guess this is the first, you realize that uh, in today's generation, that just standing up there with, uh, I guess, a blackboard and chalk is not going to do it anymore. And he said, we got to do, you got, you got inspired. You came up with the idea. He said, you want to use multimedia to see how to track these kids. So what did you use and what was the reaction? How did it work out with the kids? Sure. The other idea that Hashem dropped into my head was instead of me preaching to these kids what excites me about Yiddish guy, which was Pika Ovis at the time, I have to find topics that they're really excited and motivated in and then just feed them what the Torah has to say about that. That way they won't have to fight them to get them interested. They're really interested. You just have to feed them all the knowledge that they're already looking for. Tell them what Torah has to say. So it doesn't take a genius to work out that what excites most 18-year-old guys is money, getting wealthy, right? That's what they think about and fantasize about. So I decided to make a presentation about Maisa Kasofim, giving 10% to charity. You know, the Torah says, Chazal. So the Gemara says, shetis asher. Give 10% to charity in order that you will become wealthy. And that was the topic of the first presentation, Maisa Kasofim, giving 10% to charity. We called it making the big bucks. And it was incredible. The same kids who weren't interested in conventional learning methods were suddenly sitting at the edge of their chair, lapping it up. You know, it was a combination of Aloha and Ashkofa. But the main thing was that it was talking a language they understood. It was talking the language of multimedia. Instead of being this rabbi from antiquity who's walking in, you know, talking 
talking a different a foreign language and suddenly you're one of them you're on the same page as them you, you, you know you're walking with your projector and your laptop and your graphics and you show them sound bites and animations and they, they relate to that they really take to that and they connect with it and it was amazing to see it was a miracle nothing less than a miracle to see the same kids who showed total disinterest were suddenly lapping up all the information. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting chills listening to this because, you know, you're tapping into something that, you know, educating in the way the, of the generation that they need to be educated in and what's going to relate to them. And that's the way to inspire them. And, and, and from that idea, from that first class, you know, I know that you have a, a, a video on my circus stuff and, you know, as part of a uh, Torah live, but so how did you get now from uh, that first successful class, you know, to saying, Hey, wow, now I see this works with this one class. Well, how do we get this out to thousands of classes? So it was a, a gradual thing. It's just been growing slowly over the last seven, eight years. Basically from that class, people who attended that class said, hey, this is really good. You shouldn't just use it in Osamea. <laughs> you should be giving it to other seminaries and yeshivas. And that's exactly what I did. I was going to different schools in Israel, different yeshivas and seminaries. Giving now you put this all class. together yourself? I mean, you put the multimedia together yourself or you yeah. had to hire somebody at this point? No, I was doing everything myself. I taught myself Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, a whole bunch of different software editing programs wow amazing. and it was yeah it was Hashem bringing out finally that koyach that you know he he gave me of uh, technology and love for computers and it was suddenly blossoming and that latent koyach was coming to its potential which was you know amazing amazing so you're going around to different seminaries and giving these classes and yeah and then I started traveling people said you know you've got to fly the world and I went to England Canada America giving the same class again at that time the beginning it was wasn't Torah Live yet it was just Dan North giving presentation about charity and it was unbelievable people who weren't giving 10% to charity started giving a 10% as a result of this presentation. People were already giving 10%. One guy I remember in Moshe Matasyawa said he started giving 20%. One guy in Efrat told me that that evening after the presentation, he wrote a check for $200,000 to charity he was going to give the next day. He was planning to cut this amazing deal the next day of a $2 million deal. And he said, God, if this deal works out, $200,000 is yours. Now, to be honest, the deal didn't go through, so he didn't <laughs> give the money. But what made me realize and stop and think is, what is going on over here? How many times have people gone to Shurim on Sadaka? And, you know, if they weren't a philanthropist, they didn't start suddenly giving these huge checks. But multimedia, I realized the kayak of multimedia to get to people and really change their way of thinking and inspire them, you know. And then I realized, well, why stop at making the big bucks and charity? Let's take other topics. And we developed one on wealth, on happiness, on Pika Ovis, on Halacha, that's when we got into the Mezuzah one. And this is all still before Torah Live. Yeah, just this is just to... Dan Roth teaching. And the next stage of development was I realized, you know, far more beneficial for the Jewish people is if other teachers get to use this great material. So I started teaching the teachers to use the material. That was stage two, teaching the teachers. And then I realized, you know, if I really want to scale this thing up and make this big, I can't meet a one-on-one -on -one every single teacher and sit down and show him exactly how to use the material. Right. What I really need is a video of myself giving the talk. And the initial vision was just for the teachers to watch the video. They'll know how to go into the classroom and use their teacher version to give the class. But then I realized one second over here, who needs the teacher anymore? And once I have a video of me giving the class, we can just go right to the end user and just have people at home watching the videos and that's exactly right i mean you're, per you're perfecting the system you're perfecting the videos and now you're being able to get it out to uh you know thousands more and it takes the pressure off the teachers also because said that you know they don't have to give it over but you know you you did it basically show the video but then they can interact with the, with their kids afterwards I and mean, you have workbooks like what else do you give the teachers to help them uh, get the messages across so the teachers have an option if they want to just play the video like you said and stop every so often take questions but essentially then it's the, the video doing the teaching it's me on the screen teaching or they have the option to give the class themselves they get an instructor's guide telling them exactly what they're meant to be teaching for every slide they get the animations they get all the graphics i'm not on the screen they're just getting the raw graphics the pictures for them to be able to give the class so that's two tracks that Torah Live offers we have self-funding videos for people balabatim businessmen at home to sit and enjoy by themselves or with their families and the other track is for teachers rabbonim. they have a whole element called the teacher version and as you said that comes with instructors guides and we have student workbooks and we even develop online assessments and a whole learning management system but I'm sure we'll come to that later so uh, I mean okay so you just uh, touched on something here you said it's for balabatim but it's also for students like you know what are the ages that these are videos are, are geared for what's the who's the target market so who's the material aimed for it's across the spectrum we have so many different topics that different topics appeal to different students so we have let's say kashras where we've done the graphics very very kiddie like and that's for i'd say anything eight years old and up and then we have other topics more advanced like leadership that's for the you know, people in their early 20s and we have topics on yichud and there's so many different topics that we have that you can sit me down with any teacher if he's a middle school a high school if he's a kira rabbi and 
we can have a topic that he'll enjoy because it's just a wealth of information. So everybody's able to tap in. So what, what kept you going? I mean, what was the type of responses you were getting once you were teaching teachers how to give this over? You know, any success, early success stories that you said, hey, I know we are you know, definitely on to something here? The teachers are loving because suddenly they had a whole package, a whole curriculum. They had the, the research done for them. They had the graphics and they felt more empowered as teachers. This is a, one beautiful email I got from Milana Rosenthal. She taught in Camp Cady, a camp for kids with learning difficulties. And this is what she wrote after she used the material in the summer. My students were truly engaged and really gained a lot. One boy since Sidi told me that in all his seven years of camp, he has never enjoyed Chinuch till now. The students in my class were students with learning disabilities and behavioral problems. I didn't need to do any behavior modification or incentive in class. The program sold itself. The students were very eager to go on to Torah Live. Many of the students made PowerPoints after watching the videos and you could clearly see that they gained a lot. Wow, that's great. So, I mean, the teachers, I mean, this is having profound effect on people, you know, that were thousands of miles away from you. They were taking your courses, giving it over, and really, you know, you started to see that all these kids were being influenced and changing and really loving the material. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't just kids. You know, one lady, Sarah Katz in Moscow, she used the material. Moscow. Yeah, she gave the mezuzah class, and after the class, her husband gave her an idea to give out a piece of paper. Who wants to sign up to get a mezuzah and put one up? These are Balachovas, never had a mezuzah up. And on the spot, she said, 30 ladies signed up to get a mezuzah. And she told me straight, had she given a regular share, she doesn't think most people would have been so convinced. But just using multimedia, suddenly you're connecting to people and they're suddenly inspired and touched in a way they would never have been able to be touched. Otherwise. Wow, amazing, amazing. So out of Russia, there's, <laughs> that's unbelievable. I mean, 30 yeah. women now put mezuzahs up in their house just from being inspired and watching uh, your video on mezuzah. And I guess that's really, you know, when you're doing a video and you're putting this together, you're taking the best of what's out there and you're putting, you know, of all the materials out there, you're putting it, you know, into one amazing visually stimulating program and it just has, it seems to be having just a tremendous effect. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is, I, you know, Elchanan Schnur, a writer that I work with, he really hit the nail on the head recently when he told me, what's the power of video? He just spent a year making a video that was actually shown in the White House about what would happen in America if uh, all the power was taken down by terrorists and they wanted to have a video. I want to see that. <laughs> and they wanted to have a video that was shown in the White House to influence government officials to change uh, government procedure and funding and get the budget. And, you know, first of all, it's just amazing to think the power of video. What is going on? I mean, politicians are being influenced. You know, public opinion is being influenced by videos. It's just like, uh, it's just crazy what, what, where video is going already. But uh, he said it so beautifully that in a 10 minute video, you can give over a concentration of material that is just not possible by talking regular talking. You can speak for hours, but you'll never be able to fly across the world and interview experts in the field or have the animations or video is just able to bring together so many different elements in a well packaged. Yeah. You know, but the problem with video, I shouldn't say the problem, I guess the challenge with video is that, you know, it's, it's you know, to do it right. You talk about animations, like I've done animations where they're super expensive and in these videos, I mean, what does an average video cost you to produce? And like, what are the steps involved? Like from time you get day, okay, you say you want to do titsis. So what, what's the steps? What's the cost overall in, uh, in creating these uh, productions? The process is the first couple of months spent researching the topic, learning every single... You mean like from Mishnah Brura to... Yeah, from going back, from, you know, first to the Pesukim and the Mepharshim and then the Gemara, Tor, Shulchan Aruch, Poiskim, contemporary authorities, and not just Halacha, also not just the Jewish sources, but also if there's any secular, interesting uh, content that will bring it out. We just finished something on smiling and positivity. So besides learning all the Chazals and the Midrashim about the power of smiling, you know, I also spend a long time researching and reading psychological studies and research papers about the power of smiling, always trying to combine things in a way that's just fresh and exciting. And just even people who, have, who know the topic and are ready from still you know, sit back and say, wow, I never, I never knew that. And, you know, that's the first couple of months, just researching it. And then... And who's doing research? You're, you do, at this point, you're doing the research yourself or you have a research At team? the beginning, I was doing the research all myself, but as it's expanding, I'm getting experts in the field. So we just finished a whole series on ribis. So, you know, if I had to wait for me to learn up ribis, you know, they could take three years just on the research side. So I went to Rabbi Yisrael Reisman, author of Art Scholes, you know, book on ribis and other leaders in their field. And I've got them involved. So we finished one on ribis, as I said. So that has experts who helped in the development and the script writing. Finished one on Shatness now. Again, I'm not a Shatness tester, but I went to my friend Eliezer Kessler from Houston and he helped write the script. So as Torah Life is expanding and we're taking Kola Torah Kula and translating it into the language of our generation, we're going to the experts in every field and getting them to contribute their knowledge and their expertise and help us produce an exciting multimedia. I, I want to get back into that. You just said something that that's, uh, I think really sums up what you're doing here. You said that you are creating the, you're translating 
translating the Torah into, what is it, the content of today's generation? Yeah, that is my vision, to take Torah and to translate it in the language of our generation. You know, Noach Olawek, you've heard of him? Of course, sure. So he told me, when he saw this material, he told me the name of his Rebbe, of Simcha Vassaman. The Torah was given in 70 languages because every student has to be taught in the language they best understand. And Noach Olawek added that for our generation, for many people, audiovisual is the language. That's how people are communicating. So what I'm doing is translating the Torah to another language. There's so much Torah out there in Hebrew, in English, in French, in German. Well, in the last decade or so, a new language has just been created. And there's a, there's a vacuum of, out there that has to be filled, taking all that content, all that beauty, all that excitement of being a Yid and, and all, everything the Torah has to offer and to translate it into the language that people are just thirsty and they can't get enough of. Amazing, amazing. So, I mean, so the goal is really to, I mean, you have like, how many, like 30 different topics now? 30 topics and we're ready to go, you know, we're just looking for the sponsors to make them happen. We have scripts ready to go to production on all kinds of topics. And we recently just had a bar mitzvah package. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, you showed me a video about that. That's amazing. What a fantastic idea. Instead of just, uh, you know, or I shouldn't just say, but, you know, an experience for a bar mitzvah kid in helping to celebrate is you put together a video that was sponsored by the family in honor of this kid's bar mitzvah. And the kid became the star of the video. Exactly. Joseph and Nina Gitler, there was really um, their brainchild. And for the last year, we've been working with the family. Eddie saw their son had his bar mitzvah this week and he was a star of a new movie the topic was writing a safer Torah and he got to go on set to different meet different sofa and see how the cover is made how the sofa writes how the cloth is produced and he's been getting source notes throughout the year once a month I send him source notes learning up the topic so he gets to learn up the topic he gets to star in the film we've had him have acting lessons develop his acting skills he's come to production he's seen how behind the scenes he's learned how a video is produced and he, he gets to star in the movie which is shown at his bar mitzvah and then of course the going home gift of his guests is a USB stick with the final video so it's a, a what an incredible idea for, I mean that's an incredible bar mitzvah and, and now you could use that video you know as part of your uh, curriculum sure it comes it's added to the Torah Live library so they get the you know merit of sponsoring a, another Torah Live video which is going to be used by hundreds of thousands see of that's worldwide. brilliant that, I, I just I love that I mean you said this came from from them this idea yeah Leela Gitler had this incredible idea others have also mentioned it but this was the first family that actually produced it and you because could, I mean think about it you're, instead of giving your kid just another you know bar mitzvah lessons you know I, not everybody's meant to be able to sit and lane I don't know if he laned or not but I'm saying for me personally you know and I was taught my bar mitzvah lessons it was uh, it took me more than a year you know, and it wasn't the the greatest fun experience uh, as much as I love uh, Rabbi Wasserman who uh, taught me. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't such a great experience for him either, to tell you the truth. But when, to have an opportunity to take a mitzvah and learn it in depth for over a year and not just learn about, it, but to go hands on. And now, but you're also experiencing the production of a video and what goes on behind the scenes, the acting, the action, the, you know, you know, seeing every aspect. Then you're able to show that video at your bar mitzvah and then you're able to, and then now only do you have that, and, that, and that's an incredible gift and giveaway for your bar mitzvah, but now that's becoming a piece of this translating of the Torah into today's language that can now be shared with hundreds of thousands of Jews around the world. That's an incredible opportunity. I love that. I really love that idea. Yeah, and anybody who's interested can check out more about that at TorahLive.com. Yeah, so that's, that's just really, uh, I, I love that. I think that's a fantastic idea. So you have more topics ready to go. So what's a, what does it cost like to produce you know, one of these videos, one of these productions? I mean, you said it took a year for this one. Are most productions, is, is it from the time you have an idea and you start doing the research stage till it's uh, live? Does it take a year for each topic? Uh, it could take between six to eight months. You know, it's you know talking about filming days, editing, a lot of production, music, uh, audio, video. I mean, I guess it's a uh, yeah. I mean, some of our videos have you know thirty actors. On you know, it's it's getting the crew, getting the actors, screening them. It's an incredible amount of work that goes into any production. So, what's the budget on on a production like this? It can range from twenty thousand dollars up to eighty thousand dollars. Wow, that's for a whole production. Wow. So, and and I'm sure you ha you probably have a hundred. If you had the money, if you had the funds, I guess. It's, I mean, even if you had the funds, I mean, I guess, you know, there's only t how much time you have in a, in a day or in a year. Yeah, right? that's, but that's probably my biggest frustration is just being able to keep up with the demand. You know, people are asking me, produce this and make that. And it's just keeping up with the need that is out there. It's, it's just people are thirsty for it. It's funny. I mean, you talk about the, you know, Art School Gemara's. I remember the, I was in Yeshiva when the first one came out on Makos, and that was back in 1990. Right. And uh, I don't know how long it took them to complete it, but, you know, I think it was at least a 10 year project to get that done and to translate. So these things don't happen uh, overnight, but I guess you're going to keep going until every mitzvah, every topic is covered in an inspirational and an incredible way. 
Sure, we're producing many different topics. We're now working for NCSY in Canada. We're making something on free will. We want to make one on the power of words, judging others favorably, honoring parents, saying Shema, loving your fellow Jew. I'd love to do something about the land of Israel and also about not embarrassing others, Lashon Hara. This is a whole list of different, you know. Topics. I think Lashon Hara, especially in today's generation, would be an incredible topic to cover, you know, especially, you know, using today's technology. Uh, if you could give that over, you know, I think there was a video actually, maybe I'll link to it in, in the episode. Um, did you see that there was a video about Lashon Hara House? Uh, I forgot what it was. I think it was an animation where there was a rabbi that uh, went to buy someone's meat or something for them. And like all of a sudden, like it just went crazy. But that's the type of thing that resonates. I and mean, that's that's what you're doing here. You're, you're creating viral videos. You're creating incredible content that really hammers home the points. So uh, how many different uh, countries and schools have, have your videos been shown in? The material has been enjoyed by over 400 schools, schools, and outreach organizations around the world, and it's across the spectrum of orthodoxy. I've even had people, you know, reform, conservative, sign up to use the material. It's unbelievable. You're not, you know, it's it's, it's funny because it started off for off the day of kids, but since then it's been used by yeshiva guys, school kids, bali tshuva, bali batim. I mean, this is an email I got uh, recently. This guy signed up for Toe Life subscription, and I asked him how he got to hear about it, and you can read what he said. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll read his email. It says. Uh, I love learning Torah, but I'm not able to devote a lot of time to it because I'm in medical school. This is a perfect way for me to learn at my own pace. In fact, I have almost been brought to tears a handful of times over the past two days because my heart is bursting with happiness over gaining new knowledge about Hashem and His commandments. This is coming from a medical student who has no connection. To, he doesn't live anywhere near an Orthodox community. He's three hours away from a, from an Orthodox, the closest Orthodox community. And this is his, really his only access from Torah. What an incredible story. I mean, be able to reach Jews like this and, and, and get them to this point of emotion uh, is absolutely fantastic. So, But how did he actually, you could you could watch these videos on at the website at TorahLive.com? Yeah, exactly. Everything is on our website. Great domain name, by the way. Great domain name, by the way. Yeah, thanks a <laughs> for getting that domain for us. So you can access it from online and I guess from any programming in any of the schools that are being given over in. Sure. And now, besides the amazing content, we also have a whole platform with online assessments and quizzes where teachers can track exactly which students watched which videos, which assessments they took. They can go into a student and see what questions he answered, what he got right, what he got wrong. Kids, when they finish a course, they can get a, a personalized certificate of completion, you know, saying that so-and-so has finished this and this course by Toe Alive and they can Fantastic. hang that up proudly. So it's besides the amazing content, we also have a whole infrastructure of a learning management system to complement it. So, I mean, you know, you have this great content, obviously distribution is key, you know, getting into new schools, getting into uh, organizations like NCSY and, but there, you know, what other ways are you distributing? I know that you, there was something with El Al that you're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbi Tzvi Kamenetsky from Toronto, our med school in Toronto, introduced me to Rabbi Yochanan Chayut. If you've traveled to El Al, you've probably seen this rabbi with a white beard hanging around. Yeah. Familiar? Yeah. It looks familiar. <laughs> so he is the official El Al rabbi and he saw Torah Alive and he was extremely impressed with both the content and visual appeal of the videos and basically wants to fly with Torah Alive. And thanks to him, Torah Alive is now on selected flights, El Al flights. I believe it's on El Al to Toronto, El Al maybe to LA, for sure the one to Boston. The longer flights, any flight with Dreamstream installed on the plane has uh, Toe Alive. Wow, that's incredible. To, you know, from going from teaching a class to frustrated kids, you know, in Orsamer to having your videos shown on El Al flights. Yeah, El Al estimates about 100,000 people have access to these videos. And, uh, you know, if you see Rav Yochanan Chayut at El Al, please go up to him and thank him and tell him we want more, you know. <laughs> you want this not just on the planes with Dreamstream, but you want it on all El Al planes. You want it on all El Al planes, even the ones with the screens, individual I screens. I can imagine. I mean, what a, you know, you're on the plane for hours at a time you could show kids torah videos and mitzvah videos they're, they're coming off the flight not only entertained but with uh, knowledge and inspiration that they'll use for a lifetime yeah my rebbe of yisrael berkovitz says that's why hashem created technology you know the torah says bereshis bar elakim and rashi comments bereshis bishvil hatorah shnikoreshis bishvil yisrael shnikoreshis the reason why god created all of technology and gave us the talent to use it is for the sake of getting klali soul to be motivated to learn understand and get clarity this is this is where it's at that's why hashem made this technology, we just got to tap into it and use it. All right, by Dan, I, I think you're definitely onto something here. For just a couple more questions, we got to close this uh, this episode up. But it's only these you know, these videos. They're only in English, or you have uh, in other languages. How are you uh, tackling that? No, we have subtitles 
for many of the videos into German, French, Spanish, Hebrew, Russian. I even had a volunteer from Italy, completely out of the blue. He sent me an email, says he wants to start translating into Italian. So you Amazing. can see this fill-in video in Italian subtitles. If you click on the video, it has a CC button, closed captioning at the bottom right of the video. And you can have the same video play with uh, whatever subtitles you want. Wow, so already it's in uh, most ma major languages. Yeah, not all the videos, but we're working on translating more and more. But many of the videos are. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. All right. So let me, uh, I mean, I, I love the fact, you know, I love your story. I love the fact that you took a challenge and, you know, you're literally changing the way that Torah is being learned today. Uh, and I agree with you. I mean, who might agree with you? you you've, you've had a bigger abundance have come out and have uh, backed you and have told you so that uh, and support you in this and that, you know, this is the language of today's uh, generation. And if you want to inspire and if you want to change, if you want to give over the content, uh, you want to give over the Torah in a way that's not just palatable. I hate to use the word palatable with Torah because of course, Torah is palatable, but in a way that's uh, inspirational, in, that, in a way that they're going to remember and retain and be inspired, then what you're doing is absolutely uh, incredible. So Kol Kavod to you. Thank you. The, the, the real inspiration originally came as also the inspiration for the book from of Shimshon Lefer Hirsch. He has this beautiful quote in one of his books. He writes, I intended to show that this full and authentic Judaism, Torah Hashem Tamima, does not belong to an antiquated past, but to the living, pulsating present. Nay, that the whole future with all its intellectual and social problems whose solution mankind expects of it belongs to Judaism, the full and unabridged Judaism. Wow, what a powerful quote from Rav Hirsch. That's amazing. I let me just ask you a couple of uh, questions because, you know, just on the, you know, you're very inspiring people, but uh, what, what was maybe some of the best advice you've uh, ever received from somebody? Well, Rabbi Olosky's advice, you know, at 30 to really believe in yourself and find your niche and just devote all your energies to it. That was definitely a life-changing event for me. The other advice is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's advice, uh, which I find has given me a lot of strength. So just uh, to finish off here, what, just a couple more la uh, last minute questions, but what was some of the things that you find inspiring? I mean, I know you talked about Rabbi Orlovsky before earlier, you know, about using your strengths and stuff, but what, what else uh, keeps you going? Well, when I look back at my life and I see many of the challenges and those things in my life that had the greater frustration and were the greatest challenges, seeing how they actually ended up to be the best blessing and the, 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 the best things in my life for me, that's, you know, whenever things are hard and I'm facing challenges and I don't know where it's going to end up, I look back in my life and look at those moments and that just gives me a lot of uh, positive feelings going forward. And it's really... A pasuk in the Torah, Kodesh Baruch's advice. You want advice? Can't get better than God's advice. When Cain felt intense jealousy towards Hevel because Hevel's carbon was accepted while his own was rejected, so Kodesh Baruch says to him, "Imtativ seis," which means if you work to improve. Seis, you will become uplifted. That's how Eben Ezra explains the word Seis, uplifted. And basically, Hashem was telling Kayan, if instead of looking at your situation in a bad way and, you know, thinking why your carbon wasn't accepted, why your brother's was, look constructively and think how you're going to grow from this ordeal and become uplifted. Imtativ, Moshin Toiv, if you use this ordeal to become better, Toiv, Seis, you will become uplifted. And this is something that applies to all challenges. Instead of wishing them away and resenting one's friends who seem to have it easy, to use those trials positively to become a more fulfilled and contented person. And that's something I've seen in my life. You know, when my family was pushing me to go out of Kolel and to leave the, the regular learning and get a job, you know, and that was a, a very hard stage of my life. And at the time I thought like, you know, I had a certain resentment. I didn't, you know, want to go that way. But in Tetis Ace, that push, which was very difficult at the time, actually ended up being the best thing that could have happened to me. And it's the same with those kids in that first class in Osamech. Again, the worst challenge, the biggest disaster of a class, so Ace ended up being the biggest blessing. And I think that's something we can all draw great inspiration from. Well, you, you definitely inspired me. I, I mean, I've been inspired since I met you and been watching the progress, you know, over the last few years and, you know, where you're going and, you know, what you're doing is not an easy task. And and is, you know, hugely time consuming and I'm sure super expensive. Uh, you know, just, you know, as you said, each budget, each video, depending on, on the size and script and everything could be from 20000 to to $100,000 or more, I guess. But, uh, you know, you, you, kudos to you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you one last question. I, I like to ask people off the cuff. It's really interesting. But if you had an opportunity to be stuck in an elevator with somebody in the past or present, besides family members, who would it be and why? Hmm, tough question. I guess my first reaction would be, well, I'd love to, you know, be stuck with the great philanthropists of our generation, Schottenstein, Rechnitz, and all these people to show them the project and get them on board. But the truth is that Hashem says, I'm not worried. The funding Hashem is going to send, you know, whoever he sends. But I guess what I'd really love to meet is the founder of Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg? Mark Zuckerberg, right. And, and you know, through in the same elevator ride, we'll have a founder of Google and YouTube. To get them, to appeal to them, to send out to all the Jews on their list, there must be millions of Jews out there, to send them out that they should let all the Jews of the world know 
that terror is real and you know we've been sold for many of us growing up we've been sold a boring diluted you know unexciting version of terror and nothing could be further than truth Torah has the answers to every problem, every situation, every life challenge that we are all dealing with. If it's friendship, if it's earning money, if it's growing in character traits, Torah has the answer. And for me, my biggest wish would be that if these three people who have access to so many millions of Jews in the world, if they could just send out a short clip to get people to see Torah alive and to wake up to the beauty and the meaning of living and being a Jew. You know, I think it's beautiful. I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, no, it would be amazing if, uh, you know, you know the, the founders of Google and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and everyone else that has that type of reach can get these messages out there. But we ourselves, I guess, can, you know, spread the knowledge, spread the videos to other people. But, you know, I think you talk about the technology being, or the internet, they say, is a is, uh, Tova Tovara, right? It could be that this is why technology was created. You know, if you wanted, you know, we sadly, you know, 90% of Jews today are not yet Orthodox and not yet from they don't they don't see the beauty in the Torah and perhaps that is why technology came in place today that the, there is really no easier or better way to get someone inspired than with the video and what you're doing so Rabbi Dan thank you so much for taking from your busy schedule and taking time to be on our show thank you for inspiring me thank you for inspiring others uh, this has been absolutely incredible and uh, I wish you continued Hatzlacha I encourage everybody to check out your videos and to you know definitely sh uh, you know share with others try to you know help get them into other schools and stuff because this is really what is having the most profound effect on students today. So Kol Kavod and I look forward to hearing more about your future successes. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the From Entrepreneur Podcast with Nahum Kligman. We hope you learned something valuable and will share this with your friends. For show notes, archives of previous episodes and more information to help you start and grow your business